Greetings, welcome to Facts About Everything. I'm your host, James Egan. Uh, I get complaints sometimes when I talk about these misconceptions, either in these videos or in my books. Not from people who say that they're wrong or I'm making it up or it's inaccurate, just people are annoyed going, oh, I always believe in that, that's really annoying, I wish I didn't know that. So I thought I should talk about something that shouldn't upset anyone. Let's look at religion. If you have a Bible, get it. Just to make sure I'm not making this up. Adam and Eve ate an apple in the Garden of Eden. The Bible doesn't specify what fruit they ate. The idea of an apple probably became popularized by an old painting. The Hebrew word in one of the translations is tapawak, which means scented fruit. It is more likely it was an apricot, fig, or quince. In the Bible, Noah built a huge ship. It's not called Noah's ship or Noah's boat. It's an ark. Have you ever heard somebody going on holiday on an ark? Drawings of the ark made it look like a ship with a steering mast. Noah didn't sail the ark in the Bible. Where would he go? The beach for the weekend? Ark means box or chest. It was a huge wooden mass that he needed to stay in to wait for the flood to pass. In the Bible, Noah took two of every animal. It says in Genesis 7-2, of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. The unclean animals that are taken in twos were the animals Jews were not allowed to eat. The clean animals were any other animals that were edible. Jesus had no siblings. Okay, this is one people get really defensive about, but it says that in the Bible. And this can't be misconstrued, because as you can see, there's many, many examples of the Bible referencing Jesus' brothers and sisters. Matthew 13.55 says that Jesus has four brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judah. Matthew 13.56 says that Jesus has sisters, but they are not named or numbered. Angels are described in the Bible as beautiful beings. There are many types of biblical angels. Angels, archangels, virtues, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, cherubims and seraphims. When I say cherubim, you may think of the cute babies you see in artwork, especially in the Sistine Chapel. However, the biblical passage Ezekiel 10.14 states, each of the cherubim had four faces. One face was that of a cherub, the second face of a human being, the third face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. That's scary. Thrones are described as wheels within wheels, with the wheel rims completely covered in eyes. Okay, that sounds terrifying. Biblical angels pluck harps. The plucking harps was first mentioned in John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost. Biblical angels have two wings. There is no angel in the Bible described as having two wings. Seraphim angels have six wings, and cherubim have four. In Christian beliefs, when people go to heaven, they become angels. It is never referred to in the Bible that people can become angels. When a person dies, they are welcomed into heaven by angels, but never become one themselves. Buddhists worship their god, Buddha. Many Buddhists don't see Buddhism as a religion, but as a philosophy. Being at peace with oneself and meditating doesn't necessarily mean Buddhists need to have a relationship with God. Also, Buddha was not depicted as a god. He was a man, and he looked nothing like that fat, smiling statue you see everywhere. Buddha, whose real name was Siddhartha Gautama, lived around 560 BC. Although some sources say he was a prince and a religious leader, there is no evidence to back this up. The fat statue that is often mistaken as Buddha is called Budai. It's not known for certain how he got mixed up with Buddha. Some people have suggested that Westerners see happiness as being big and jolly, so when they see this fat smiling statue representing enlightenment and happiness, they assumed he was Buddha. The Star of David is a Jewish symbol. The Star of David was a symbol in Buddhism, Sanatana Dharma, and Jainism before Jews popularized it. Jews can't eat pork. I first heard of this from The Simpsons. Don't eat pork, not even very fuck. Can't touch this! A kosher Jew will not eat shellfish, hare, camel, pig, or a hyrax wherever that is. According to the Torah, the only meat a kosher Jew can eat is from a cloven-hooved animal that has a multi-chambered stomach like a cow, goat, or sheep. Only 21% of the Jewish population in the US go kosher. Jews can't work on the Sabbath. Most people heard of this for the first time in the movie The Big Lebowski. Saturday, Donnie, is Shabbos, the Jewish day of rust. That means I don't work. I don't work drive a car, handle money, I don't turn on the oven. The Sabbath, Jews call it the Shabbat, falls between sundown on Friday and an hour after sundown on Saturday. 96% of Jews in the US stated that they work during the time. Some hardcore Jews will do absolutely nothing during the Shabbat that resembles work, including using a light switch, answering a telephone, or tearing paper including toilet paper. All Muslim women wear veils. Assuming they all do is like saying all Irish people dress up as leprechauns, when in fact only some of them do including me.
Good times. Most Muslims live in the Middle East. Most Muslims live in Southeast Asia. 204 million Muslims live in Indonesia, which is far more than any other country. That makes up 13% of the world's Muslim population. In the Quran, it states that a Muslim martyr will have 72 virgins waiting for him in heaven. The word used in the Quran for virgin is her. This is a mistranslation. The Quran was written in Aramaic when her meant white grapes. So martyrs aren't rewarded with 72 virgins, they just get a bunch of fruit. Yay. Jihad means holy war. Jihad translates as struggle, but Muslims perceive the word to mean duty. Muslims do not believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus is mentioned several times in the Quran, as well as other biblical characters such as Noah, Abraham, and Adam. Even Mary has an entire verse dedicated to her. Hindus call their religion Hinduism. Hindus refer to the people of the Indus River region of India. Persians were the first to use the word to reference the entire Indian population, and the name stuck. The official name for Hinduism is Sanatana Dharma, which means eternal duty of God. Followers of this religion are called Dharmis. Pardon me thought of going, I'm just going to say Hindus for the rest of this video, just so it's not confusing. But that's why misconceptions happen, because people go, oh, that's too hard to remember, I'll just remember the old thing. And that's not fair on the Indian people. There's over a billion of them, and they have the right to be called by the right name. So for the rest of the video, I will call them the correct name, Dharmis, not Hindus. Dharmis worship cows. The reason Dharmis respect the cow is because they they see it as an animal that gives more than it takes. Although it only takes grain, grass, and water, it provides us with milk, cream, yogurt, butter, cheese, and fertilizer. Although Dharmis respect the cow, they do not worship it. Dharmis worship idols. Dharmis do not directly worship idols. Instead, they believe that since God created everything, his work can be seen in every living thing and every object. This concept is called Arka, which means living embodiment. Dharmis see idol worship as directly worshiping God. Dharmis worship millions of gods. You may you notice that I'm saying God, not gods. There is a misconception that the Sanatarma Dharma has 330 million gods. This is an oversimplification. Dharmis believe in one single creator of the universe. However, since God is beyond humanity's understanding, many interpretations have been created of God, such as Shiva, Krishna, and Vishnu. These depictions are merely symbolic of a single God. Each Dharmi can decide which depiction of a supreme creator they wish to believe in. People have always known what was written in the Bible. The way we know the Bible today is very different to how it was known for over a millennium after it was written. It was originally written on scrolls and parchments rather than a book. People have only had their own Bibles for the last few hundred years. Before that, people outside of the Catholic Church had very little understanding of what was written in the Bible. Even if the common people got a copy, the scriptures were written in Latin, which no one could read outside of the church. For a long time, Europeans' knowledge of God came directly from the the priests. It was only when the printing press became popularized and Martin Luther translated the Bible into German that people finally got to read the Bible themselves. Luther assumed this would end debates about religion. In case you haven't seen the internet ever, it's still a bit of a problem. Purgatory is mentioned in the Bible. The idea of purgatory didn't exist until the Council of Florence devised it in 1431, over a thousand years after the Bible was written. The Bible said that only the pure go to heaven and the wicked are banished to hell. It doesn't really say anything about the in-betweeny people. What about a good person who occasionally commits a sin? What about the good people who died before Christ was born? What about a baby that died before it had a chance to be baptized? Do innocent babies deserve to go to hell? The council decided that there must be a place after death where decent souls go to to be purified before ascending to heaven. This became known as purgatory. By the way, if you feel like I'm attacking religion, there are some misconceptions atheists make as well. Jesus' life story is copied from other religions. This theory became quite popular after Stephen Fry said in QI, He was a saviour, Mithras, sent to earth to live as a mortal, through whom it was possible for sinners to be reborn into immortal life. He died for our sins, but came back to life the following Sunday. He was born of a virgin on December the 25th in a manger or perhaps a cave. He had 12 disciples with whom he shared a last meal before dying. His devotees symbolically consumed the flesh and blood of him. And became popular in America when Bill Maher said it in his documentary, Religious. A thousand years before Christ, Krishna was a carpenter, born of a virgin, baptized in a river. As Bill Maher says, Christ's life does sound very similar to the Egyptian god Horus. Maher states that Horus was born of a virgin, had 12 disciples, baptized in a river, walked in water, cured the sick and blind, and was tempted in the desert, raised Asar from the dead, whose name translates into Lazarus, and was crucified and resurrected 
three days later. Moore also explains how the Persian god Mithras, who predates Christ by six centuries, was born on December 25th, performed miracles, was known as the Way, the Lamb, the Light, the Messiah, the Savior, and he also died and was resurrected three days later. So not only is Christ's life a remake, it's a crossover just like the Avengers. When Christians dismiss this theory, it's easy to assume that they're just getting defensive because it shows huge inconsistencies in the foundation of Christianity. However, Ida B. Pratt and M. L. Bierbreyer are adamant that this theory is wrong. And they're not just defensive Christians trying to protect their religion, they're ancient Egyptologists. Egyptians didn't believe in baptism. Asar doesn't translate into Lazarus. Ancient Egyptians didn't believe any human had divine powers, not even the pharaohs. Also, the idea that Christ had similarities to Mithras comes from a documentary called Zeitgeist, which doesn't cite any of its sources. Zeitgeist tries to find similarities, but they don't actually exist. For example, they say Attis was born on the 25th of December. It also says he was crucified. Neither of these statements have ever been a part of Attis' mythology. It says the mother of the Greek god Dionysius was a virgin. It also says he was born on 25th December and he was called the King of Kings. These statements have never been a part of the myth of Dionysius. This documentary also says that Krishna was born on 25th December. He was born of a virgin. He died and was resurrected and he was a carpenter. These statements have never been a part of Dharmi beliefs and Krishna was a herdsman. So this concept can't be taken seriously by historians. Special thanks to these fine people for all their help. Be sure to subscribe to Facts About Everything. Follow me on Twitter for updates on upcoming videos. Check out my Facebook page to let me know what subjects you want me to talk about in the future. Thanks for watching. See you again.